That's like my uh, old tuning progression. I had a couple different tuning progressions I used to use years ago to make sure that my guitar was in tune. We're going to continue on with this theme about tuning and using your ear and kind of some of the things that I feel after my last video, which is at 850,000 views or so in two days. A uh, lot of comments, tens of thousands of comments on it uh, about tuning and being in tune and what it means to actually be in tune. And um, I feel like uh, like there's definitely been an atrophying of people's ears because of reliance on tuners. It's not just tuners, it's auto-tune, things like that. And I'm going to talk about how to kind of get some of that back, how to improve your ear, and what are good ways to actually tune your instrument to make sure it's in tune. Um, we're going to be doing some things, talking about how to tune with intervals and why that's important. Pianos are tuned with intervals. And um, and intervals are the distance between notes, okay? We'll talk, we'll talk more about that in a minute. I have my Beato um, interactive course, all my courses, my Beato bundle on sale until Monday night. Then it will revert back to its normal sale, but it's at 89 bucks. That's for four courses. My my Beata Book Interactive, which is my theory course, my ear training course, my beginner guitar course, and my Quick Lessons Pro, which is more of like an intermediate guitar course. But um, a big focus of this channel is always about learning to, to uh, develop your ear. And I thought a lot about this, that uh, why this tuning thing is really an issue with people, how people have to look at their tuners. Now, there are some uh, things that you need a tuner for. For example, if you are at a gig and it's loud and you need to silence your guitar uh, or your bass, or if uh, you're live, you break a string, whatever happens. I mean, you, you, don't, you can't really hear yourself to tune, but when you are tuning here and in the studio, um, I don't just rely on the tuner because I will I make sure that my chords are in tune because many times you get false readings on tuners. Okay, uh, there are particular intervals that I will check on the instrument to make sure it's in tune, and there are chords that I play. For example, this chord that I played, this B, this B, uh, it's a B sus four chord. So you get B, F sharp, B, B, E. Now, why is this chord, why do I use this chord? Because it has, it has three Bs in it there. And the perfect fourth interval between the B and E is very easy, I think, to recognize whether a note is in tune or not. Now, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you've got one string in tune, you know, if you're going to tune without a tuner. But if you do tune with a tuner, you want to still play these chords and intervals and check them to make sure they're in tune. So that's a chord. Once I have that, I know that's good. Then I check it with this. I use this, what I call an E power chord down here. So I bar. If that is in tune, then you know at least the, the low portion of the guitar is in tune with the open strings. This is what I call an E5 chord. Play it like that. So if you look at my hand, I'm playing. So I've got kind of like an E minor here. And I put my pinky there. I bar it though, like that. And then I use those open strings. Another chord that I go to is G. This particular G, because these two notes, if you're low G, these intervals, the fifth and the, the fourth, and then that octave needs to be in tune. Many times that you're playing those things, are not perfectly tuned, but when you hear a perfectly in tune guitar, it 
It just sounds amazing. Okay, so I will tune those intervals and then I will check things like this. I'll play the open G string and I'll play the octave above at the eighth fret on the B string and then I'll, I'll check that. Now to me, I hear a little um, discrepancy there. Sounds good there. Now that could be an intonation thing. Robert's a slight waver. But really, if, some of this can be just how the pressure that I have. Slight, slight, slight tuning stuff. The other thing to do is to tune fifths down low. Okay, this is uh, uh, what we used to do all the time because everyone just would tune one note. When I was tuning, nobody had tuners, so we would have a note. Let's say the A is a little bit out of tune. And I would tune. I would tune that harmonic. But then I would go through and I would say, okay, let's say that I tune, tune that note a little bit low. Let's say that that's, that's what's gonna be our relative pitch there. Or um, uh, if I, and then I play the two, I play the two strings here together. It's like, okay, one of these strings is out of tune. Which one is it? That sounds good to me there. That sounds good. Well, I definitely know that one of the strings is out of tune. I figured out the A string is out of tune, okay? So what I would do then is I would play those two notes together, and I would literally just twist the tuning peg while I'm doing this. Until it sounds in tune. That's not quite right. There we go. That sounds good. This is literally how everyone used to tune back in the seventies. And you would check your um, you would check your D, uh, D power chord like that. You would always check power chords, especially if you're playing with distortion. Okay, because with distortion. It really, if it's out of tune, it sounds horrible because power chords need to be in tune, right? Let's see here. Let me tune myself on here. guitar is kind of out of tune, right? So I can do the same thing. Now, I'm just going to tune with harmonics here. Now I'm tuned. You hear that lock in? Right there, when you're doing this thing. I'm tuning a fifth there to...
The, the distorted guitar. Will. Show you. It's unforgiving. Sounds good. So those intervals. Um, when I say intervals, what do I mean? And why are these, why am I tuning with fourths and fifths and octaves? Okay. There's a thing called the overtone series. And if you play the low string here, I explain this in my theory book and in my, uh, my Beato ear training course. I talk about the overtone series. What, I, what I'm doing there is I'm dividing the string in certain, that's dividing the string in half. You have the fun, fundamental E, there's your first octave. This is your, then you get the fifth, right? So I would check that. I would check the open uh, B string with that fifth. Now, if you're relying the overtone series completely, the notes start to get slightly out of tune. But if you can get the fifths in tune, what you'll notice is piano tuners will tune fifths. And once you get all these fifths in tune, uh, you'll check the octaves and make sure that they're in tune as well. But you get those fifths in tune. And what is a fifth? What am I even talking about? Think of the perfect fifth. Okay, the fifth is this. Uh, a fifth is like a power chord, the root and the fifth, uh, a perfect fifth interval. It is, uh, if you take a major scale, let's say I take A major, it's the fifth note of the scale. But really, a perfect fifth is a certain amount of half steps. You got one, two, three, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight half steps, right? From a to B flat is one half step, two half steps, three half steps, four half steps, five, six, seven half steps. Seven half steps is um, is a perfect fifth, okay? So seven half steps, or if you're gonna, um, uh, but it has to be five letter names spanned. That's the other thing, right? So if you think about this, if you look at the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, five letter names spanned. Okay, so A to F would not be a fifth. It would be a type of sixth. You don't know if it's a major sixth or minor sixth. You have to count the, the number of half steps, but you know it's some kind of six because there are six letter names spanned. It's that simple. Um, I talk about this right in the very beginning of my Beato book. How do you define an interval? An interval is the number of half steps counted plus the number of letter names spanned, A, B, C, D, E. Or a fourth would be four letter names spanned, A, B, C, D, right? A, B, C, D, I can't even do that. I can't do my four fingers, it's hard for me to do. A, B, C, D, there we go, you can see it. A, one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D. Uh, so those four letter names span tells you it's some type of a fourth. Well, if it's a D flat, right, then what do you do? Uh, what kind of a fourth is that? That's that's kind of weird. Like, how would you figure that out? Is A to D flat a perfect fourth? No, it would be a diminished fourth, okay? Or a D sharp, A to D sharp, right? Some people call that a tritone. Well, that really is an augmented fourth because a, a to D is a perfect fourth. So why are these perfect intervals important? It's because of the overtone series. The overtone series is something that occurs in nature, in our atmosphere, and the, the 
uh, first couple partials of the overtone series, the first few harmonics are really stable, and it's what uh, tunings are based on. Okay, if you can get those tunings together and tune the fifths, that's the that's the most important intervals to get in tune, and the octaves. If you get the fifths in tune, your octaves should be in tune. Now, you have to account for things like intonation. Like sometimes uh, you'll have a string that is uh, is sharp because of the distance between the bridge here and the nut up here. If the distance is not correct, if it's too short, your intonation will be sharp. The string will be sharp no matter what you do. If it's too long, it'll be flat. So uh, this bridge here is compensated. If you look closely at it, you can see that these things are different, um, different widths or different lengths from each other. It's not a straight line across because what it's doing is it's compensating for those particular strings to make them in tune as well as they can be. Now you have certain tuning things to allow you that, that will help you um, that will help you, the Buzzy Featon uh, tuning system. There's There are other tuning systems that will have compensated nuts, compensated, you know, that you'll compensate with the saddles, things like that, that'll make it easier to tune. But, um, uh, but let's say we're just playing a Gibson SG like this, and you have what it is. You have to make sure that those fifth intervals are, are being tuned. Now, we had some interesting comments here. Let me go back. So Alexander said, and power chords work with distortion because the harmonic distortion content adds thirds and fifth harmonics. Um, that's exactly right. The power chords are really good, meaning distortion with these power chords, these fifths. The reason I tune fifths is not just because most rock songs use, you know, right. Right? Those are power chords. E power chord, D power chord, which I just bent out of tune a little bit. A power chord. Like Back in Black uses power chords, as do pretty much every ACDC song. Actually, pretty much every rock and roll song uses power chords. Uh, so Alexander, thank you for that. Uh, let's see, here's another one. I would love to know how to adjust this process for floating bridges. Well, uh, floating bridges would be on things like um, uh, would be on things like Floyd Rose tuners, right? Or Floyd Rose uh, tremolo bars. They would have um, floating bridges. That means they have springs behind them. Uh, I don't. I have one guitar back there that I I don't know where it is, but I don't have the the, the whammy bar on it to show you how it works and everything. But there's a there are things that are called Floyd Rose tuning systems that have springs behind the bridge and they also have um, they also have locking nuts up here so they'll have these things that will lock each set of two strings you'll use a, a, a wrench a um, uh, to, to actually lock the strings down and it crimps the strings pinches them and holds them in place and then the springs will move around. Once you have it in tune, that thing will stay in tune and you'll have these fine tuners on the Floyd Rose thing that you'll have like on a violin. And um, and so you check the tuning using those. Once the thing is locked down, the only thing you can do is use that fine tuner, sharp or flat, to tune it, to tune the strings that way. But um, uh, let's see, you have another thing here. Don, I saw your short, and I know Andy Summers, but I could hear tuning at least like a journeyman. To me, it's all just math and physics. I'm no Andy Summers. Don, so it's funny, Andy Summers, you start getting things like this when you have compound fists. Once you have these things with the count with the compound fist, meaning two fists together. Those have to really be in tune to sound good. If those are out of tune, it sounds horrible, okay? Um, so understanding what these terms are, fifths, 
fourths, octaves, thirds, sixths. This is uh, this is really music theory and it's ear training. And, and I really believe that because um, people are relying on tuners so much that they don't, uh, they're, they're almost incapable of tuning an instrument relative to itself. What does that mean? Because this is where uh, this thing that I, my wife Nina was confused with, because she doesn't understand, because I really didn't explain it well about tuning something uh, to itself, right? So let's go through a little exercise here. Let's detune the guitar. I'm going to detune this uh, this low string, or I'm going to de detune some of my strings here, okay? So, and we're going to get the guitar back in relative to itself. So let me just tune. Okay, so I've, un I've untuned the guitar and I don't have a tuner. So what do you do here? What do you do? Well, you decide on a string that you want to tune. Okay, to me, that I figure that sounds like a pretty good A right there. Now, if I put on my tuner, it's dead on. Okay, now, <laughs> okay, so I have one string in tune here that I've tuned perfectly because to me, that just sounded like A, okay? Um, so now I'm going to tune using harmonics. Okay, check it out. And what you want to do is you want to get that beating to go away. You hear that wavering? Listen, listen close. When it gets right to the, right in there, it's perfect. If I detune it a little bit, it'll, there you go. And then I'm going to go. Now here, I'm going to go. Then I'm going to go. Then I'm going to start checking these different things. Up, oh, not good there. check this slightly off okay now sometimes some uh renzo what's up renzo uh, is talking about Eddie Van Halen playing triads with heavy distortion and getting them in tune. Great question. This is like stuff that people talk about, John Frusciante and Hendrix and everything. And what Renzo's talking about is if you play a, um, if you play a triad um, up here... Um, This Eddie would compensate by tuning his B string a little flat so those intervals would be more in tune. Um, that is, this is kind of an important thing that had he had a tuner, he probably, the Van Halen songs would have not sounded as good. Because that sounds really good there. I've compensated that B string so that um, so that it that so that that third is really in tune. It's very difficult to do that. You have to actually experiment with this stuff 
and use your ear instead of relying on these machines to do it, all right? And you should be able to tune by ear and and it will um, it will sound better. I, I would, um, look, I, I'm as concerned with tuning as anyone. I never would trust tuners. I would always tune and then I tune, maybe get one thing in tune and then tune the guitar to itself and then just check it again. Um, so, if the if the interval of a fifth is out of tune like that, listen, it's out of tune a little bit. But you're like, that sounds in tune there. Sounds in tune there, it's good there. Sounds like it's getting more out of tune. More out of tune there, right? So what did I just do? I just bent my A string up just a little bit to make this go from out of tune to in tune. So, so, you not only do you need to have a good ear to do this, but sometimes your guitar will be out of tune in certain spots and you have to micro adjust with your fingers to, to, um, to actually get it perfectly in tune where it sounds great everywhere on the neck. I'm constantly moving my fingers and adjusting things as I'm playing in every pro player will do this that's the thing is like every pro player i mean yes there are things that uh if you have a slight indentation in the fret uh because you need your frets recrowned that will cause your string to be out of tune a little bit but enough to to make it sound bad where you'll get wavering and then you move up a fret and it's like oh that sounds good there that's because your guitar needs to be set up but the, the point of all this is your ability to recognize these things by ear and not rely on, on auto-tune, not rely on guitar tuners for, for all this stuff. This is, um, this is really, really important to develop your ear to be able to hear intervals, okay? It's not... Uh, it's not just for tuning your instruments. If you want to learn to play a song by ear, you need to know what the what the chords are. If you're playing major chords, if you're minor chords, if it's you know, if it's some weird chord progression that changes key or something, right? It's like, how do I know? Let's say I play some weird tune, right? If I'm playing. I mean, like, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna do, um, so I'm like, uh, is it this? It's this. Then that's the song Josie there. Now that's got really weird chords in it. Well, how do you figure that out? Well, I figured it out because there was no tab. I listened to the intervals. I was like, da da. As, I mean, that can be played a bunch of different places, really. It doesn't have to be played. So it's this note here, right, at the at the second fret. That's that note E to D, right? Well, you could go E to D there. You could go E to D here. E to D, E to D. It's like, why do I even pick that it's being played there? Hear that intervals out of tune? I just tuned it. Hear that? If I let this string down a little bit, it's out of tune. But I'm adjusting. I'm pulling the B string down slightly to, to micro adjust for that. Adjust for that interval to be in tune. So, um... But I know what that interval is. Bum, bum. I know that that's a, a flat seven interval or a minor seventh interval. Okay. 
because it is um, uh, it has a particular sound. And this is what I teach in ear training, and I pr I talk about this constantly on here, and there's a reason I talk about this constantly, and I make videos about things being in tune and out of tune. There is a real, um, there, there, these are extremely important things that I believe beginners should develop. In my acoustic guitar course, the first thing I do is teach people how to tune their guitar without a tuner, okay? Because I think it's so important. I think it is so important that it's the first thing I teach. Okay, I teach you how to hold the guitar, and the first thing I teach is how to hold the guitar, right? And then I teach you how to tune the strings. Because if you can't tune your instrument without a tuner, then you're never going to be able to learn anything by ear, period. You just cannot do it. Forget about all these things about, about me going like that and adjusting that perfect fifth on the fly. I'm pulling that string. As soon as I play that note, if I didn't, it'd sound like this. Listen. Here, that's out of tune. This note, C sharp, is a little flat. I just, I'm literally pulling down the string. If you look at it, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's unpulled pulled down. That's pulled down. In tune. Out of tune. In tune. Now, I don't know if people actually even notice stuff like this, but all of your favorite guitar players that are pro players, Tim Pierce, Tim constantly does this stuff. He knows exactly what I'm doing. Robert just said active tuning. I am active tuning because I've developed my ear because I recognize what these intervals are supposed to sound like. So if you want to buy my uh, uh, ear training course, get all four of my courses for 89 bucks, open up another tab right now and just click on it and buy it. I'm telling you, it will, um, it will improve your life by just doing these basic things, by like learning how to recognize intervals. Even if you just learn, if, if you just work on it and you just learn the basics, intervals and recognizing major minor chords or types of seventh chords. What's up, Daniel? How well the guitar is taste its tune up the next, wait, up the next, you, I think you meant neck, changed by simple things such as how tall the frets are. Daniel's exactly right about that. Uh, um, the, the way that your guitar is set up will change these things. Okay, now I can tune this interval where I can I can make my B string more in tune where I don't have to stretch it. I love this. I like Josie because it's a great song for tuning. Uh, Now that chord right there, this is like a um, F major seven sus two chord. And this here is uh, F sharp seven sharp nine. Then G major, uh, just G sus two with a major seven. Now those chords, if your guitar is not in tune, you cannot play that tune at all. You cannot get away with it. I mean, frankly, you can't play ACDC if your guitar is not in tune. If your guitar is out of tune with itself, forget it. You can't play Van Halen. You can't play any rock. You can't play anything. But those things were, um, uh, these complex songs like this, they have more complex chord changes uh, that really rely. But, you know, look, there's Nirvana songs that rely. <laughs> I always come back to uh, to on a plane, you know. Oh, that's out of tune. So I'm have to compensate because that low string, if I'm hitting it hard, is going to jump a little sharp. But the, here's the thing: when it goes to the chorus. Uh, this chord here, 
that's a, a B flat, a sus two with a major seven. Um, if that's a little bit out of tune, right. If you put distortion on that, you're done. There's no way it will be in tune. Oh, horrible, right? That's way flat. Uh, JF Soul said something here. You need good intonation first on your guitar. True. That is true. But some of us don't... Um, some of us can't afford guitars. My first guitar was a Penco, or no, my first thing was a 12 string, but I had this guitar called a, a Global that had a um, uh, had a plywood top on it. And I didn't know anything about tuning. I just knew, um, I knew that it didn't sound good. And I was already playing cello and bass. I knew how to tune my instruments because we had to tune every single day. And that ensemble playing was really uh, important for developing my ear, playing bass in the orchestra. Because the orchestra depends on the bass being perfectly in tune, right? So you are constantly have your ear when I'm playing. I'm constantly listening to my notes. I'm matching them with everything I'm hearing. And I'm making sure that they're in tune with the cellos and that we're all playing in tune. This stuff is so important. And when you play a non-fretted instrument, it's really, really important, and it develops your ear incredibly well. How would we know we've never heard the song? I know, right? Uh, so, for those of you that don't have my, my uh, Beato bundle, my four courses, it's on sale for 89 bucks. Uh, for all four of my courses, it's on sale through Monday night. Just click on an, another tab here. You can go to it, click on it, and pick it up. Um, and uh, check out my tuning video if you haven't heard it. It's pretty funny. It's kind of a comical video that that drove me crazy this week when I was uh, – because everybody kept saying the same thing. Like, how would I know if it's in tune if I've never heard the song? Like, what? You guys are the best. Um I have uh, uh, Dickie Betts passed away. I want to um, say that very sad, 80 years old. I had um, Warren Haynes in yesterday where we talk about it. Well, I did an interview with Warren. That'll be coming out. Um, so you guys are awesome. Have a great rest of your weekend. See you. Uh, Robert, thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate it.